Coconuts TV. What I'm about to do is completely illegal in Thailand. Brewing your own beer in the kingdom can land you in jail, but there are a growing number of passionate home brewers willing to take the risk. The global craft beer boom started in America, where it's now a $14 billion industry. Most of the world has followed suit, with tens of thousands of small brewers worldwide. In Thailand, however, home brewing is illegal. It can even land you in jail. Thailand's beer market consists of two enormous brewers. The first is Boonrat, which produces one billion liters of lager a year. They're best known for Singha, a bland beverage that has slightly above 50% of the market share in the country. The other half of the market belongs to Thaibev, makers of Chang. Chang is another unremarkable lager that uses rice instead of malt, resulting in a foul-tasting concoction. So why is this? Why are there only two major breweries in a country of 60 million people? It's widely believed that these laws prop up Thailand's beer oligopoly, which is a market dominated by a small number of players. Thaibev and Boonrat are two of the country's most powerful companies, and both have ties to the government. The bottom line is that you can count the number of Thai-made beers on one hand. But it's clear the kingdom is on the verge of a craft beer revolution, and I wanted to meet the brewers that are defying Thailand's draconian alcohol laws. A friend invited me over to brew with him, but he doesn't want to appear on camera for fear of prosecution by the government. Despite the complex flavors of craft beer, the basic ingredients of brew are simple. All beer uses malted barley, hops, and water. But I wanted to go beyond that. I'm using organic passion fruit grown in Thailand to add something special to this batch of homebrew. Brewing is a creative process. Beyond the basic ingredients, there are infinite possibilities and combinations of flavors available for brewers to utilize. It requires an empirical approach but there's plenty of room to experiment. In that sense, it's an art. It smells a lot like a, a haystack after it, it's rained. It's hot, steam's coming up in your face. It smells great, it's a very pleasurable experience. Brewing the beer is almost as fun as drinking it. The first step of the brewing process is creating the mash by running boiling water through the grain to extract the starches and transform them into fermentable sugars. We're like a, like a witch stirring a cauldron of, of a magic potion here. Kind of what it feels like. It was time to meet the brewers moving the scene forward. I went to meet the group behind Sandport Brewing at an amateur rock concert where they were serving up an impressive range of tasty ales. That is good beer. It's balanced. Are you scared that one day you will get in trouble for doing this? For following your passion for brewing? Yeah, I'm scared, but, uh, but I don't have a choice. Uh -huh. And I believe that I'm not doing the wrong thing. But what happens if the police catch you? You mean a fine? Yeah, fines, the jail time, and all that. Okay. It's a 200 baht for brewing. So just for brewing, it's 200 baht? Yeah. yeah. Fine. And okay. uh, yeah. selling is 5,000 baht. Yeah. Five or six, six, six months, months in jail. It's 5,000 baht or six months in jail. Yeah. Or, or both. 5,000 5, baht and six, six, six months, months in jail. jail. Yeah. Okay. And to your knowledge, has this ever happened to anyone yet? Not, no. Uh, not yet. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's hope you're not the first. <laughs> <laughs> the law now is you can make your own alcohol with it, uh -huh. but you have you have to make it clear, clear. crystal clear, crystal like clear. water. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. There's no and color. No color. Why is that? Actually, the time to say <laughs> don't make a beer. <laughs> Typically, 
home brewing grows into a small business that is then scaled into a successful craft brewery. But the current law seems to prevent aspiring brewers from ever having the chance to grow into something that can challenge mainstream beer. We're now on to the boil, a step in the brewing process where we add loose cascade hops to the mix. These heady bittering agents balance out the brew and add a subtle bite. My next stop was Niche Cafe to meet Yak Beer, a group of brave beer geeks who are planning on opening their own microbrewery. Well, Thai law is like 100 years ago in the US. You can't do this, you can't do that. So we have to pass through this together. If you want to open a brewery in Thailand, mm -hmm. there's only two ways. Okay. First is microbrewery. Right. Uh, if you are owner of a restaurant like me, you can pass the, uh, the license to do microbrewery right away, no problem. Okay. But you can sell only on the permit. Right. You cannot sell it outside, you cannot distill it, you cannot bottle it, you can sell it in draft it to place only. Okay. So it doesn't make sense for the investor. So no one can start at the bottom and grow no. following a natural growth no. curve of business. No, no, not at all, not at okay. all. This is all fact. This tool right here, it's called a refractometer. It uses light and a prism to measure the specific gravity of a liquid and even more specifically, the sugar content or salt content of a liquid. So we measure it once before fermentation occurs and then we measure it after fermentation occurs and we can figure out how much alcohol is in the beer. The man considered the grandfather of Thai homebrew is called P. Chit. What makes him so unique is that he's openly brewing, bottling, and selling beer out of his bar and restaurant on the island of Koh Kret. He's celebrating the release of his 100th batch of successful homebrew, and he doesn't plan on slowing down anytime soon. When I read more story about the US, uh, the the Japan, you know, craft beer is booming. Right. I think we have like a 60 million people, but we only drink only three beers here. <laughs> so the law change. I'm pretty sure it's going to change. It's unavoidable. Yeah. But when? Do you think that it's possible that they can make an example of someone and get them in trouble? Oh yeah, and that's a good thing. I I, I can see that future. You know, maybe me. <laughs> maybe I'm the only one. You know get you know the story gets exploded but that's a good thing for the home brew for the craft beer because people know what's that is so they they come to learn more right we just keep producing and but keep low profile okay until we get big uh, every province and i think it's time to come at the party i met third a fledgling brewer one of p chit's proteges uh, many people come here and learn some of them and p chit is my inspire to uh, work uh, on my beer too. My passion is bigger than fear and actually I didn't care about what the government is gonna do to uh -huh. us. Yeah, I just happy brewing right now. Yeah. I'm using a heat exchanger to cool the wort down quickly so we can add the proper yeast at the right temperature to prevent ruining the beer. This is also when we add the delicious fresh passion fruit juice that we'd previously squeezed. I almost felt cheated by not being able to drink it. Brewing is all about delayed gratification. We sat down with Thay from Team Alpha Brewing to discuss the demand for Thai-made craft brew. Have you ever had a situation where someone has come to you and said, you can't do this or you shouldn't do this? <laughs> No. No. Yeah. Even <clears throat> even the police just order beer for me. Police order beer? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. And, and and they're just like, wow, this is better than, you know, lager stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like someone from the middle of nowhere. Uh -huh. He's like, okay, enter on my uh, Facebook page and he's yeah. like, whoa, I just want your beer, can you ship like across the sea? He's like, sorry, if 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 you want my beer you have to like getting from me, right, from right. me only. And believe it or not, he just 
fly over the city to get my beer. <laughs> so he flew from America to Bangkok yeah. to pick up this beer. Yeah, so this is like... a pretty good beer. <laughs> the last stage of the brewing process is draining the beer into a corny keg. But in a way, it's only the beginning. It still takes weeks for the wort to ferment. Brewing is an exercise in patience, but it's not clear if patience is all that's needed for these laws to change. The Thai government is infamous for its corruption, and these beer laws are a prime example. While I wish it was simply a matter of time before sense dawned upon the country's elites, I think it's more likely that Thailand will see small-time brewers proliferate only if the government can get something out of it. Until then, all you can do is admire these beer outlaws following their sud-soaked dreams. That's really good.